Winter is the perfect time to slow down just a little bit. It's when we can take a deep breath and relax while watching the snowfall. Imagine grabbing a cozy blanket, a cup of hot chocolate, and sitting down by a nice warm fire. Doesn't that sound nice? The truth is that is not a reality for most and it is not a reality for us either. Being winter outdoors does in fact mean that we are indoors more. Naturally, we cook a lot more in the winter too. We have found that winter provides us with a great opportunity to put a lot of creative energy into our food and new recipes. We're gonna be bringing you along for five different desserts. Some of these are classics and some of these are new that we have never tried. First dessert is cinnamon rolls, not just any cinnamon rolls. We are making jumbo sized cinnamon rolls. So I'm going to get a cup of milk heating up on the stove. We're using whole milk and it is lukewarm. You don't want it too hot or that will kill the yeast. I use two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast, which is just equivalent to one of the little packets you can buy. Just gonna give this a quick stir. We're gonna set it aside and we're gonna get started on our dough. Cinnamon rolls consist of three components. So you've got the dough, the filling, and of course the most important, which is your frosting. For the dough, I'm not just using white flour. I'm gonna use a little bit of whole wheat flour and then a little bit of flaxseed meal. I really like this stuff and incorporating it into baking. Some of the other ingredients are sugar, salt, eggs, coconut oil and butter, and of course the yeast in the milk. So let's get going with it. All right, we've got the dry ingredients mixed and we're adding in some of our oils. We find ourselves cooking a lot with coconut oil. I don't know why, we just prefer it. So we do a lot of baking with it too. And you can definitely use all butter for this recipe. This is very hot coconut oil. It's been warm in our house. So we're doing about half and half of coconut oil to butter. And we're gonna add some cube butter that we just pulled out of the fridge. So it is hard and we're gonna mix that all up until we get the consistency that we want. Right, that is perfect. We are going to add the yeast and the milk and then grab some eggs. Okay, here's our bucket of eggs. And this is a five gallon bucket that we limed previously and I have yet to open it, so. Let's do the honors together and see what it looks like in there. There you have it. So there's a nice little layer on top, which is what you're supposed to find. I'm gonna grab three eggs because our eggs tend to be a little bit smaller. And we're gonna get those rinsed off and add it into the recipe. Right, those eggs look really good and they are probably going on five months old. <laughs> We're gonna flip this on the counter and add just a little bit more flour and knead it for a few minutes. That is what we're looking for. We're going to Add this back to the bowl and put it by the warm fire and let it rise for probably about an hour or so. The cinnamon roll filling is very simple. We are adding some chopped walnuts. So those are going in first. And then we're gonna be using coconut oil again, probably about a third of a cup or so and a bunch of brown sugar, of course. We're making this recipe special by adding some of our birch syrup and what birch syrup is, is you tap a birch tree and you get birch sap and then it is condensed down into this delicious stuff. When Eric and I first tried this, we made it two years ago and we just tried to like swap it out for maple syrup and it is way stronger and more concentrated. So I advise you to use it in 
applications like this. So in a dessert or something like this, it, it tastes absolutely awesome when you use it this way and it doesn't overwhelm the recipe that you're making. And lastly, some cinnamon. Our dough has risen and our filling is chilled. So let's make some cinnamon rolls. These are going to be huge. We're gonna get them in the oven and we have our oven preheating at 350. They're probably gonna take about 20 to 25 minutes. So we're just gonna keep an eye on them. Well, those may have gotten a tad out of control. I have not made them that big before, but fear not, they are going to taste delicious. We have to let these cool sadly for quite some time and we need to move on to our frosting. Our cream cheese and butter are heating up and then I'm gonna get some milk with our powdered sugar. I only like to use a little bit because I want the cream cheese to come through so I'm not using very much. You can definitely add a lot more if you want a sweeter frosting. I'm just gonna add that all together. And then in goes vanilla. And then I'm gonna add some spruce tip syrup that we have. Well, I think it's safe to say that these are going to be deeply enjoyed and I think they have plenty of frosting. And on the bright side, we can consider them healthy because we put some flaxseed meal and whole wheat in there. Delicious. This evening, we are gonna be whipping up some crepes for dessert. A crepe, to me, is pretty much just like a really thin pancake, except you don't want these ones to rise when they're cooking. And I think the reason we make crepes so often is because of how easy and quick they are. They only take a few ingredients. You can also make crepes for breakfast, but these ones are gonna be specifically sweet and they're gonna be for dessert. And to make crepes, you need flour, eggs, sugar, coconut oil, and vanilla. And that's it. So let's get started whipping these up. And to spice things up a little bit and give this a sourdough taste, we're gonna turn over our sourdough starter. So I'm gonna use about a quarter cup of this in there. And let's go ahead and get our pan fired up here. You want a nice hot pan for crepes. And then we're gonna add our flour. Perfect, and you want it to be thin. I added just under two cups of water to this. You want it to be able to spread out in that pan. If you don't, you're just gonna get like a flat little pancake in the middle. Takes about a minute on the first side, and then once you flip it, 
it's only like 10 or 15 seconds and then that thing is done pretty quick. There is our delicious plate of beautiful crepes and now you need to make some choices and that is what you want to fill them with and what you want to top them with. We pretty much always fill them with kefir cheese because that's what we have. You can also do like cream cheese or cottage cheese, but our kefir cheese is over here and kefir cheese starts as kefir yogurt. That's what this is sitting on the counter and then we make it into a cheese by straining it through a muslin cloth and letting it drain out. Basically what happens is all of the whey just drains out of it. So that's that liquid right there. And you end up with the cheese. This is the one we already made from yesterday. So that's about a half a cup. We got about another half a cup right here. And kefir cheese is very good, but it's extremely basic or bland. There's, there's not much flavor to it at all. So to flavor this up and just sweeten it up a little bit, all I'm gonna add is about a tablespoon. Ah, probably not even that, maybe half a tablespoon of sugar. Get this mixed up and that's it for the filling. And when we top our crepes, we usually do fruit. We've done blueberries, raspberries, all different kinds of things. This is actually a new one for us. And these are salmon berries that we picked in the fall and then froze. And they're not that sweet. To sweeten them up a little bit, we're gonna do a little bit of honey with them. Let these cook down till they're thawed out and we'll start rolling up some crepes. There we go, topped it with a little more honey. Our crepes are complete. A simple, delicious dessert. Can you guess what we are making for our third dessert? A bunt cake. Truth be told, I have not made many bunt cakes before, but there's just something about it that sounded absolutely delicious and very comforting. So that's what we're making. And you can make so many different flavors, but we did very well with our gardening and our pumpkins this year specifically. So we are going to be making pumpkin bunt cake. I've got all of our dry and wet ingredients out and we're gonna get started on the batter. We've got our sugar, eggs, and oils mixed together. I used a little bit more brown sugar compared to white sugar, and I also used a little bit more coconut oil compared to the butter. And I always err on using a few more eggs just because ours are small. Two other wet ingredients we're adding is our pumpkin. And this is just some pumpkin that I previously steamed and we pureed. And then we're also adding yogurt. We are using our kefir yogurt, which is a little bit more of a runny texture. So you could use plain yogurt or you could use Greek yogurt. That would probably be really nice in here. Then we're gonna get started on the dry ingredients. Ooh, it smells like pumpkin.
The spices we're using are cinnamon, allspice, cloves, and nutmeg. So really, really good stuff here. I think this is going to be an awesome cake. I'm not sure if I'm going to have to add more liquid or not. We're going to go ahead and mix this in with all these dry ingredients now. So we just added half a cup of this earlier. I'm going to add more yogurt because it is in fact too thick. Our bunch pan is oiled and we're ready to add the batter. Well, I'm not gonna lie, that looks uh, perfect. It was a very simple process. We are going to get our oven preheated to 350 and cook this for probably about an hour or so. That looks fantastic. We're gonna let that cool for a little bit before we pop it out and we're gonna work on our icing. We're reducing that icing and then we are going to let it chill outside for a little bit and then it is time to flip our cake. Well, tell me that does not look delicious. It turned out perfect. Couldn't have asked for a prettier Pretty result and the frosting or the icing is absolutely delicious. It tastes like if you were to get like a salted bacon on a maple donut. So really nice flavor and it's time to eat. Making this dessert was a piece of cake. Who doesn't love a good donut? And we've been making potato bread recently, and it's just completely different than regular bread. So we decided tonight for dessert, we're gonna be making potato donuts. We're gonna first start with steaming some potatoes. We're making the dough for our potato donuts, which are also called spud nuts, kind of funny. And these are our riced potatoes, so they're nice and fluffy. And we're aiming for about a cup. So I'm not gonna use quite all of this, but we do want them to have a lot of a potato essence. And then I have a half a cup of warm milk here with a teaspoon of yeast already dissolved in there. Some recipes don't call for yeast when you're making these. We wanted to incorporate some yeast so they are a little bit fluffier. I think traditionally you use baking powder, which we are also using a little bit of baking powder. And I'm just gonna add all of our other ingredients into this. And then a teaspoon of some baking powder. Got all those ingredients incorporated and now it's time to add the flour. The flour is going to vary a little bit. We are aiming for about 12 donuts. So I think we're gonna use probably three cups of flour, but we're gonna see what our dough tells us. Let's start with about half of that. So we're not gonna need this that long at all. I'm just gonna get it together and make a little ball and we'll go ahead and put it by the fire and let it rise for about an hour. Looks pretty good to me. Do you have a spatula? 
Can I have a special? How thin do you want the mirror? Now we're cooking, we ended up with a lot of donuts. So we're gonna definitely have some leftovers that we're gonna freeze and we are frying these in moose tallow or moose fat. Nothing pairs with donuts quite like a cup of coffee and we're gonna make an espresso shot. And this is our, I think it's called a mocha pot or a mocha pot, but it makes like little espresso shots. So it's kind of cool. What we're gonna do is grind up some beans the beans go in there, some water goes in the bottom, you put that on top and you put it on the uh, stove and it boils out your little espresso. Two to three inches of oil, 375, two to three minutes on each side. Yeah, flipping these ones, these ones look good. Yeah, these are gonna be, they're gonna be fluffy. You need to uh, sorry, I was going to ask you, do you need like a little spatula for the cinnamon sugar? I think you just put them straight, yeah, straight into it. Well, here we go. And I'm a huge fan of donuts, like really good, hot, fresh, homemade donuts. And every place we've lived, there's always been like really good donut shops. And unfortunately, we just haven't found that up here. So I'm really looking forward to having a good donut. Okay, let's dig in. I want to sip this espresso first. And I brought some dessert jokes for this evening. Okay, potato donut. I want to eat one of the nice, softer, fluffier ones. They look a little bit like an old-fashioned donut. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna say right now, that's better than a donut shop. That's the best donut I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Holy cow. It's a potato. This week's been awesome because all these desserts that we're making, we get leftovers. I get kind of sweeted out real quick. They, they are delicious. The texture is so fluffy. They're really puffy. Really puffy and fluffy. That's what I would say. Oh my gosh. Like, like little potato, potato pillows. You ready for the first joke? <laughs> okay. What do you call an island populated entirely by cupcakes? <laughs> I don't know. Deserted. That was pretty funny. <laughs> pretty cute, huh? Okay. What's a turkey's favorite dessert? You just spied the answer. No, I didn't. You I didn't. spied the answer. A turkey's favorite dessert. You spied. I don't know. I didn't see it. What is it? We'll leave that for you guys, the audience, to tell us, okay? What's a turkey's favorite dessert? And then I have a special one for Eric. What's a dessert's favorite pickup line? I like you very much. You told me that one yesterday. <laughs> well, I guess that concludes our evening of Donuts. These could definitely be breakfast too, of course, right? Yeah. These are good. I would suggest making these. Yes. I like the potato. Whoa! Okay, so we need to save the rest of those. We need to leave. We have to go. I've already had three. I have some more. Here, I'm gonna dunk. I'm done for now. I'm dunking. Yeah, let's take bow too in case we... Uh... You should dunk. Our fifth and final dessert is a all-time favorite of mine, which is flan. 
I don't know what it is about flan. I don't know if it's the jiggle or what, but it just gets me. And if you've never heard of it, it is a custard type dessert or dish, and then you have a caramel sauce on the top of it, but you actually cook it upside down. So it's a little bit unique. There's a lot of different recipes all throughout the world. So you have Latin American recipes, you've got Spanish ones, and we are, I'm pretty sure doing a Mexican recipe today, but I'm not I'm not positive on that, so don't quote me on it. We are going to be using cream cheese in our recipe. Uh, the first thing that we have to do though is make our caramel sauce. So we're gonna start with a cup of sugar and I'm gonna get that heating up. The goal is to get this to liquefy and we're going to brown it a little bit. So I have to kind of keep a really close eye on it at this point and just keep stirring it. We're gonna watch it real closely. This recipe is simple, it is not hard, but I would say that this part, you wanna make sure that you keep a close eye on it. Okay, I think it is ready and be careful my friends because you have to keep, you gotta keep an eye on this stuff. It's uh, cooked quickly. We've got our little dishes or ramkins as they call them over here. We're gonna pour a little bit into each one. Well, they say to let these, you know, set them aside and let them cool. Uh, but ours are already kind of like hardened. They hardened pretty quick. So hopefully I didn't cook it too much. I have never made this recipe before, surprisingly. So this is just entirely new to me. We're going to get started on our custard next. First up, we have one packet of cream cheese going in. And then I'm going to add our eggs and vanilla and get that mixed, all mixed together. Do yourself a favor and make sure your cream cheese is softened or perhaps even heated up just a little bit. That was a little bit harder than I expected to mix that in. We're going to add some of the other essential ingredients and that is a can of evaporated milk and one can of sweetened condensed milk. And sweetened condensed milk is basically, it's like the evaporated milk, so it's really concentrated, but there's a lot of sugar added to it. So both of these are going to make a very rich, flavorful custard. We're gonna get this mixed and then into those ramkins. We have a little extra custard, so I'm gonna to have to do a second batch. These are going to go in the oven at 350. I believe they're gonna cook for around 40 minutes or so. I do have various sizes here. And we're gonna add a little bit of water to the casserole dishes because they are traditionally steamed when they're cooked. So we wanna kinda of add some moisture to their baking or cooking process. Okay, well, I officially take back what I said about this being easy. I burnt myself and I also burnt a batch of the caramel sauce. So we got our additional flan in the oven. These are looking pretty good. I think I did okay on the bake time. And I think you wanna take them out when they have a little bit of jiggle to them. So they're not like completely cooked or overcooked. And then I have two here that may have possibly cooked a little bit more. And I can just tell because they were kind of puffy and they have a darker edge. So we've got different different things to try, they all have to chill. So we have to let all of these chill overnight and then we will be able to enjoy them tomorrow and we'll flip them upside down. This one looks perfect. Well, it's been 24 hours and we are flipping over our flan, seeing how it turned out. And it turned out awesome. I am so excited since this is my first time making this. I was a little bit, 
I didn't really know how it was gonna work out. And this is exactly what you want. So some of the caramel sauce is still stuck in there, but most of it came out and it was melted when the flan was cooking and then somehow it stays melted. And then when you flip it over, it creates that nice sauce on top of the custard. I have a few more to flip and then we're gonna get Eric in here and try these. Those were a little more challenging to get out than I thought. You just have to kind of like break the seal around the ramkin and then tap it maybe once or twice along on the bottom with the plate, shake it and get it off. So we broke the seal, they look awesome. And I'm not gonna lie, we had some of these yesterday. We had to test them out and see how they tasted, but today is the first day that they're chilled. And these were the ones that turned out like perfect. Yes. Cause the ones we tried yesterday were overcooked. a little overcooked. So yeah, you're, you're right, they're a little rubbery. Oh, whoa, that's intense. Holy cow. You can taste the cream cheese a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've had, I've had flan a lot and I don't know if I usually had a cream cheese recipe. This seems a little different to me. It's firmer. It seems a little firmer. Usually it's a little silkier. Yeah. I don't know. I think I've had like a store-bought like flan. cheap flan, but this, the texture, Oh my gosh, this is, it's insane. It's like a mix between cheesecake and like a custard firm pudding almost. What do you think about the caramel sauce? It's really, it's epic. My two tips for making flan would be watch the sauce. I burnt it so it, it can, you just gotta watch it closely. And then also I would probably try this recipe maybe even without the cream cheese and I would pull it out of the oven just a tad sooner because I do like a little bit silkier um, mm -hmm you know, pies and custards and things like that. Although, I mean, I can't complain, it's extremely delicious. What are we gonna do with all the extra sauce? I was gonna eat it. This one's a little thin, so um, maybe that taller one is gonna be a little jiggler. That's what I was saying, give you more texture. I mean, this is like, and these are really cold too, they were just you inside. This is really like good. Sandwich it. That was a wrap for our five fantastic desserts. Yes, and we were talking about like, which one was our favorite. And I think we don't have a favorite, at least in my opinion, I have one that was my least favorite and that was not because it wasn't good, but just because we make it all the time. And that's the crepes. Every other yeah. single one that we made just like completely blew me away. Yeah, I would <laughs> almost say they were tied. Do you have a particular favorite? Like Every time I got to one, like the cinnamon rolls, like those are my favorites. And we got to the donuts and I was like, oh, that's my favorite. And then the flan and then the, uh, the one that surprised me the most was the bunt cake. I didn't think that was going to be like, I thought it was going to be good, but I thought it was going to be more like just a normal cake. But that was just moist and that maple glaze on there. Surprising. The bunt cake seemed to be the most simple of all of them, the least exciting. And it was absolutely the most, it was out of this world. I don't even know what the frosting that we had, the yeah. icing, it was real salty, maple-y mm. flavor. And then the moistness with the, the yogurt in the cake was, to me, that was probably like the one that was, I would make that again, hands down, exact same way. Yeah. This I would modify just a tad. The bun cake too, that was like the simplest one to make. And I, I would say the potato donuts. I would definitely I suggest know. making the potato donuts if you've never made those before. Well, that's gonna do it for our desserts and we're gonna finish up this and then we're gonna eat dinner. <laughs> a little out of order today. Let us know if you make any of these recipes or if you have a favorite dessert that we should try. Yeah. Maybe not do them as thin. Delicious. Do you like, cause you know flan's always thicker. Oh, it needs to be thicker. That's a, for sure. That's a modification. But with like the other two ones we made, the bunt cake is the only one I didn't, I wouldn't modify.